Subscribe our channel and press bell icon to get the notification of new video. Like this video. Join our WhatsApp group to get daily latest updates. It's totally free. Part 1 You will hear a conversation about a part-time job. First, you have some time to look at question 1 to 4. Listen carefully and answer questions 1 to 4. Good afternoon. May I come in? Yes. Come in, please. Well, is this the Job Centre for Students? Yes. How can I help you? Mm, I'm looking for a part-time job in the campus. Do you have anything available at the moment? Yes, of course. Before checking the job position, let's get some personal information from you first, OK? Yes. Well, what's your full name? My full name is Andy Khan. Can you spell your last name? It is K-A-H-N, Khan. OK, Andy. Are you a registered student in our university? Yes. What's your major and faculty? I'm studying educational studies in the educational faculty. Good choice. Did you bring your student union card or your library card? I have my union card. Uh, do you need it? Yes. I need to copy it now. Oh, here it is. OK. And can you tell me your mobile phone number? Oh, I just lost my mobile phone yesterday. I'm sorry. May I leave my home phone? Yes, of course. It is 0114-7281. Fine. Let's talk about the pay. What's your requirements for the pay? Oh, uh, I think it should be about at least £10 per hour. OK. I think it is not difficult to look for a position for you. Now look at questions 5 to 10. Now listen carefully and answer questions 5 to 10. Well, let me check the vacant positions on the list. Here, a position in the computer lab is available now. In the computer lab? Yes. What's the position? A cleaner. And what are the working hours? The computer lab opens at 8 o'clock and it needs to be cleaned before 7 o'clock. So you should be there at 6.30 in the morning. At 6.30 in the morning? <laughs> I cannot get up so early. Sorry. OK. Let's check the afternoon time. There is a job working as a counsellor assistant in the student union on three afternoons per week. That's Monday, Wednesday and Friday. Oh, I have three afternoon seminars in those three afternoons. I'm so sorry. Well, there is a position as a cashier working from two o'clock to five o'clock on Thursday afternoons. Uh, what is the place? In the campus canteen. Is this OK? I'm afraid I have to attend yoga class at that time. Well, and there is a position as a teaching assistant at the International Language Centre. That sounds interesting. My major is education. Well, they need a language teaching assistant to supervise student attendance and send out handouts, 
in three evenings a week, on Monday, Thursday and Friday. Great. Well, could you arrange an interview for me? How about next Wednesday morning at 10 o'clock? Is that the 7th of May? Right. That's fine. 10 o'clock on the 7th of May. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Goodbye. Goodbye. That is the end of part one. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turns to part two. Part two. You will hear a student inquiring for some information about opening a bank account. First, you have some time to look at questions 11 to 15. Now listen carefully and answer questions 11 to 15. Good morning. What can I do for you? Good morning. I'd like to open an account. Could you give me some suggestions? Well, let's fill in the application form first. OK. What's your full name? My name is Jenny Chen. Is your last name spelt C-H-E-N? That's right. Fine, Jenny. Are you a student or do you have a job now? I should graduate this year, but I took off last year, so I am still a university student now. Fine. And your birthday? I was born on the 6th of July of 1987. And your current address? I will move into a new house, so... Just tell me your new address. It's on 25 Woodside Avenue. Woodside. One word? Yes. Do you know the postcode? Let me think. Mm, it is A83D6. A83. Are you sure it's not A38? Oh, yes, it is A38D6. Right, OK. Do you have a mobile phone? Yes. My number is 090-377-4444. The last one is your email. My email is skylight1987 at msn.com. Right. Now look at question 16 to 20. Now listen carefully and answer questions 16 to 20. Right. Did you bring the documents we need, such as passport or letter from the university? Yes. Here they are. What type of account do you want to open? Mm, I'm not sure. Could you give me some suggestions? I see. How about the student account? It's a kind of current account. Student account? Does it have a high interest? I'm afraid not. If you want to have a high interest account, maybe a deposit account is a good choice. But you have to deposit at least £5,000 when you open your account. Oh. How about the annual interest of a student account? It varies from time to time. At, at present, it is 3.5%. Right. I'll take the student account. That's fine. And can I get a cash card? Uh, certainly. I will supply you with a cash card. Great. 
May I apply for an overdraft? I'm afraid you cannot. The cash card doesn't have a service of overdraft. Yes, I see. How much money do you want to deposit now? I have six hundred pounds in cash and one thousand six hundred pounds in travellers' checks. So the total is two thousand two hundred pounds. Right. Fine. Please sign your name here, where I have marked an X. Okay. Thank you. And this is your receipt. Thanks. Can you tell me the opening times of the bank? The bank opens from nine a.m. to three p.m. on Monday to Saturday. And it's closed on Sunday. Oh no! On Sunday, the bank often closes at three p.m. The last thing is the statement. How often do you want to receive your statement? Once a month. Okay, monthly. How about the other things? Anything else you want to know? No, thanks for your help. Goodbye. Bye bye. That is the end of part two. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part three. Part three. You will hear a conversation between two students about a course feedback form. First, you have some time to look at questions twenty-one to twenty-six. Now listen to the tape and answer the questions twenty-one to twenty-six. Hi, Anna. What are you doing? I'm filling in a feedback form. What form? The student feedback form for our course. Oh, I really forgot that. What's the date for handing that in? Tomorrow morning. Oh no! Have you finished? I'm just beginning. Great. If you don't mind, we could do it together. Of course. Did you bring your form? Uh, yes. Okay. Let's begin with the top first. It is a course name. Politics and economics. No, it is our faculty name. Oh, sorry. According to the course data from the twentieth of March to the twentieth of June, I think the name of the course should be Global Economy. Are you sure that it is economy, not economics? Definitely. All right. The, the next item is the name of our subject advisor, Professor Robert Hanson. Right. Yeah, I like him very much. Me too. He's very handsome. Yeah, just like me. Yeah, nice and humorous. Yes. Let's see the first point on the evaluation form: handouts and equipment. What's your opinion? I think the handouts are very good. I mean, they are clear and sent out on time. Yes, I agree. But do you think the words of handouts well, maybe too many words? What do you mean? I mean, I have to spend so much time reading them, just like reading a book. Right. Let's put that down. How about teaching equipment? I do really love the new multimedia. It's perfect. Yes, I agree. But the printer. It is really bad. Too old, and sometimes it doesn't work. Shall we suggest a new printer instead of the old one? Why not? Let's turn to the second item. It is course structure. I do really like Robert's balanced design of the course. Yes, I agree. He organised it very well. Do you remember he sent out the course outline on the first class? Yes, it is very clear. I think it is a very good beginning, and it is very important for the class. Right. I gained confidence from him after the first class. What about suggestions with course structure? Maybe. What? 
Don't you think we have too much research work in the first module? Research work? Yes, we only had one research in the second module. You are right. Let me put that down. Now look at questions 27 to 30. Now listen to the tape and answer the questions 27 to 30. The next one is practical training. Well, I think it's a good chance for our future job, right? Yes, I agree. I learn more knowledge from that than from other lectures. Right. What about suggestions for improvement? I think the department should supply more different places for us instead of just one. Yes, let's go on the next one. Assessment. What's your opinion? Fine. I got my feedback really quickly of one of my presentations. Yes, me too. But I think the exam time should be adjusted. What type of exam? Open book. Yes, I agree with you. Only 30 minutes is not enough. Yes. Anything else? What did you think about the essay? Too many. Right. There are three essays in one module. Yes. On other comments, what should we write? Jack, what do you think about the teaching? Well, I like Robert's teaching method. It is very flexible. Yes, me too. And I think we should advise Robert to help us to improve our writing skills. Right, that's all. Yes, that's all. That is the end of part three. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turns to part four. Part four. In this section, you will hear a lecture about sports in Britain. First, you have some time to look at questions 31 to 40. Now listen carefully and answer questions 31 to 40. Having a drink at the local pub, going for a walk in the country, or watching sports on the television. These are all the main ways in which many British people like to relax on weekends or holidays. Such activities tell us about how modern British people like to spend their leisure time. But if you look more closely, we can see that these activities are not just recent inventions, but are deeply rooted in the British culture over many centuries. Today we will talk about some sports which we see played throughout the world and were born in Britain. Let's begin with football. As we all know, Britain is the place of origin of modern football. The idea of sports having seasons, like the football season, also comes from the natural rhythms of an agricultural society, where the timing of harvests and the general weather affected how people spend their time. Football is played in early spring, when the weather is wet and not too cold. In winter, bad weather kept people indoors, and they had not so much work to do on their farm. So, men used to doing hard work, or physical labour, found they needed to release their energy and so got together regularly to play boisterous and fast games like football. Meanwhile, during the Renaissance, 
football had been regarded as a rough sport for the aristocratic young men, although all social classes used to join in on the local football match. Today, violence is still associated with football. Football hooligans, supporters of rival teams, sometimes clash before, during, and after matches, and run riot through the city or town, breaking windows and beating each other up. Of course, the football violence gets a lot of attention. Nowadays, before some big matches, when trouble is expected, police usually patrol the streets, pubs close to the football courts, and some shops, and even lock their doors and shutter their windows. The football association was set up in 1863. It is the league or association that the major teams compete in. For a trophy title known as the FA Cup, the football association puts out a series of measures to control violence, so as to ensure a successful match. A more gentle sport that is very popular in the world is tennis. Wimbledon, a town near London, is where the world's top players gather to compete. It has been one of the major sports events of the British calendar. As we all know, tennis was invented in Britain, but few people know tennis owes its origins to the church. According to the records, by the mid 15th century, people were making a game of bouncing a ball off the side of the local churches or cathedrals, first using the hand and later a racket. Football, archery, tennis, and other sports were frequently played in churchyards. In England, the sound of summer is said to be the sound of leather on the willow, the ball hitting a cricket bat. Cricket was one of the very first team sports in Britain to be played according to the same organised rules nationally. Before the Victorian era, and in modern Britain, people from all walks of life played cricket. But in the 19th century, cricket became a sport associated with the upper classes. It was a kind of snob game, played by boys who attended public schools, and then the sport became popular in the public school system in the colonies of Australia, New Zealand, India, and Pakistan. British is full of idioms to the sport. Those who are not familiar with the game will be baffled by it, such as "That's not cricket" means that's not fair, and "To play the game" means to be fair. The true sport of British kings and queens is not skiing or golfing, but horse racing. National horse races have been held throughout Britain for hundreds of years. The horse at the heart of medieval life was a symbol of authority and wealth, and necessary to travelling, hunting, and warfare. The sport of riding a horse is still considered rather snobbish or an aristocratic sport, because the average British family cannot afford to own a horse. Meanwhile, there are stables which rent horses and offer riding courses at affordable prices. So certainly, almost everyone can afford to place a bet on a horse race now and then. As a sport of kings, kings and commoners alike enjoy betting on horses. The queen, who likes riding, also likes betting on horses and often attends some major races. Although she is extremely rich, she gets very excited when the horse she has placed her money on wins. There are two kinds of horse racing: the flat race, where horses and riders compete on a flat oval track, and the steeplechase, which is racing either across the countryside or around a course designed to represent the obstacles you might overcome in the countryside. The Grand National. Which is set up in 1837 and is the world's most famous steeplechase. However, some horses are usually injured and badly hurt. Horses are sometimes shot. Animal lovers cannot accept that animals should be hurt and killed for people's entertainment. The biggest social event related to horse racing is the Royal Ascot, where people dress up. And show off how fashionable they are, as well as watch the races and place their bets.
Women especially wear very delicate and exotic hats and dress designed for the occasion. Television and newspapers will often comment on their outfits. That is the end of part four. You now have half a minute to check your answers.